Today we're in downtown Columbus, uh, right in the heart of town on North 4th Street at uh, Chestnut, and we're going to visit the old Engine House 16, which is now the Central Ohio Fire Museum. The building was restored some years ago and actually returned to a historical condition in a restoration, and the fire museum has been there, supported by the local firefighters, for several years now, so I've been looking forward to this visit. Bill. Well, hello, Jeff. How, How you been? Good to see you. Fine, thanks. Good to, Good see, to you. see you. You ready yeah. for your tour today? Yes, I am. I've been wanting to come and see this building. and Well, we've been here waiting on you, well, so uh, we're in good shape. Well, tell me about the building. I mean, it's obviously a historic place. Uh, been around a long time. Well, this is an ex-Columbus fire station built in 1908, and in 1908, all the apparatus in the city of Columbus was horse-drawn. Trucks and, and mot motorized vehicles were just starting to come on the scene in the public but generally hadn't crossed over to the fire service yet. Okay. So at the time this station opened it had 10 horses to pull the various apparatus in the station and um, serve the central part of downtown Columbus. Columbus has a significant place in history in that we were the fourth paid fire department in the entire United States. I didn't so know we that. were on the early edge of modernization as opposed to the East Coast was hanging on to the old volunteer firefighters. Rather and, than the professional. Rather than okay. moving into the okay. stuff. So well, I noticed the walls here are all a glazed white tile. This is one of the earliest examples in Columbus of a glazed brick. And the glazed brick served two functions. One, being white, it reflected the light because it was dark right. in here initially. It just had gas lights. And being non-porous, it didn't absorb early on the cold dust from the boiler in the station, the coal dust from the steamer, and then later on the diesel sure. dust from the diesel apparatus. Well, it's definitely a great building, but I can tell there's all kinds of interesting stuff in it too. So uh, can we start a tour? Let's start it off and uh, get you entertained. Oh, sounds good to me. This is a sample of a hand-drawn hook and ladder that weighs 2,000 pounds and was pulled by people to the fire. So very, very heavy and a lot of manpower required. Oh boy, it sure was. Now I'm gonna do something special that we don't hardly let anybody ever do. We're gonna let you ring the bell. <laughs> Once the station got electricity, now we have boxes on telephone poles around the city that you pull. You don't need to run to the fire station and yell fire. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open up this box. This is called a Gamewell fire alarm box. And I'm going to have you ring the bell, and this key right here is what you press, and that'll activate the bell in the station and alert the fireman to a fire. So go ahead and push the bell, and let's see what happens. What's that? Whoa. Oh, man. <laughs> That is how the fireman came down the pole. Oh, I got, the, I've got to do that. You've got to do that? I, I want to give that a well, try. Well, we're not allowed to do that, but our big question is, were they upstairs working or were they sleeping? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay, the answer is yes. Yes, they were doing both. Well, let's move on to an early piece of apparatus that we actually had to do a lot of more manual labor. Okay. Look at this. This is an 1888 hand-drawn hand pumper. So as we talked earlier, the firemen had to show up or the citizens had to show up to pump. So this is like an old time farm water pump, except it's really, really big. So once we got into more technology and bigger cities, this wasn't sufficient to put out fires with big buildings and tall buildings. So that's when we transitioned to steam power, and steam power had a lot of advantages. It doesn't get tired, it can throw water higher, it can throw water farther. And so when this station opened in 1908, this was a steamer this size would have been here. And these crews were assigned to specific jobs where on the hand pumper, it was just all the citizens and basically you were pumping up and down, not a lot of organization right, there. Right. So uh, it was a lot more professional because they knew what they were doing and they each had separate jobs. 
I've seen a lot already, but there's more to see, isn't there? Well, there's a lot here to see and uh, to appreciate. So if you want, we'll go look at some more. Onward and upward. Back here, Jeff, we can see the actual openings where the stall doors were located. And as you can see, all the dents are from the horse's hooves. When they were in the stalls with the doors closed, they would kick those doors with their feet and their metal horseshoes. And so when they put the horses back after a run, then they would close the doors, latch all the latches back, and then they'd be all ready to go for the next fire run. Well, tell me more about how the building got preserved, became the fire museum. The local union had a historical committee and we were saving different items from around the fire department in one of the stations, which is typically how most fire museums start. Mm -hmm. uh, we approached the city and asked for the building when we were, knew it was going to be um, vacated and the city gave it to us for 99 years for a dollar. The new station was built next door in 1982. We required the building in 1983, and so since 1983, we've been in the process of fundraising and building and, and buying apparatus. So our biggest benefactors have been firefighters from the Central Ohio area because we want to teach fire safety here as well as preserve the history of fire service in Columbus and the country. And we have programs here from preschool up through senior citizens. So we're a big asset to not only Columbus Fire Department, but all the other departments in the area that helped support us. Well, uh, this was more than I expected. I love ringing the bell and the guys down the pole was even better. Yeah, I'm sorry we couldn't let you slide a pole. But, One of these uh, days I'll take the training. It, it doesn't, doesn't work out real well. So. <laughs> well, thanks again. Well, thank you very much.